for a long time I thought like pleasure was supposed to be for my partner. I mean, that's all I was taught. That's all you see in the media. Sadly, you look at any magazines and it's like, how to pleasure him. Well, I guess sex is for him. And you know, what does that mean if I don't have an orgasm? It wasn't until like two years ago, in my late 20s, that I realized it's a different thing to be desired mm -hmm. than to feel pleasure. So yeah. I was taught that Pleasure's for men. This is a chore and like you're, you know, yeah. your husband will, will, will bring home the money and like these like- And you're gonna open your legs, legs. Exactly. and fuck them. What you get in return is you will be adored. And I still to this day meet women. And when I talk to them about pleasure, like, oh, I get that. Like I wear lingerie. I love when my, you know, husband, you know, like, like compliments me yeah. and I'm like, oh no, no, but what does your body feel like? Does it feel good when you have sex? Like when right. it touches you right. and they'll be like, like it'll go right over their uh -huh. head. Like it'll be like I told them the sky was orange, right. you know? They're like, what do you mean? Yeah. What does it feel like? You know, it's funny cause uh, I, as a mom, one of the things that I like thought about was when you become a mom, your pleasure is supposed to be like with your family life and your children. But I also think that like, that kind of creates this entire story in our brains as women that pleasure cannot be yours, that it mm -hmm. cannot be something that you own. So it's like, how the fuck do we find pleasure within ourselves? And the moment that I found pleasure myself, what I realized was that it unlocked so much of not only what I desired in life, what I desired for myself as a woman, what I desired in my body, what I desired in my career. Right. And it wasn't even about sex. It was about like, body empowerment. What you're really getting, I mean, actually, <laughs> what you're really getting at is that pleasure is not a nice to have. You're taught that things that feel good are evil, yep. sin, yeah. imp, you know, they're all just in the bad category. Right. And what we're finding, and I think you and I bond over this, it's like green juice. It's like meditation. Right. Sexual pleasure is part of wellness. And Filipinos, you know, we have so many nurses in our community, yeah. <laughs> you right. know, in my family, everyone's taking their blood pressure. Right, right, right. right. But they don't. But no one's counting their orgasms. No one, yeah, and, and, and no one's even valuing, you know, they like, they yeah. just go blank in the face when you're yeah. like, well, what's your relationship to your body? And they, they just think, you know, that can, how can that connect to this general wellness? And right. you and I have both, I mean, my career exploded yeah. when I figured out my sexuality. Yeah. I'm having the sex I want to have and I'm not having the sex I don't want to have. Right, 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 right. right. It's knowing what you like, right. knowing what you don't like right. and communicating those things exactly. will unlock so many things. Yeah. It wasn't until my late 30s that I finally get comfortable to talking about sex with my, my husband, which was like kind of sad to me considering that that's like 17 years of a relationship. And here I am going, wait a second, am I allowed to be, right. like am I allowed to find pleasure within this experience of ours? Of course I am, but I even felt ashamed even asking for it because I was A, never taught it, B, the Filipino culture, maybe my upbringing, like we just never discussed sex. How many married couples do you think have had this conversation really, oh especially in our community? Uh, probably not very many. I know so many couples struggle with this is intimacy versus sex. Mm -hmm. And um, to me, I've always identified intimacy as connection, truth, and communication. That could look like emotional connection, that might look like intelligent connection, that might look like physical. Mm -hmm. For my husband, for a very long time, he thought intimacy was physical connection, physical, physical sex, or just sex in general. To me, intimacy is truth. Intimacy is this conversation where we're having open and honest communication. Intimacy is saying, I see you, you see me. Mm. And um, when me and John had to break down these ideas of like what sex is, you know, we even looked at sex and we're like, holy shit, like we've been identifying sex as intercourse this whole entire time, but like there's so many aspects of right. sex. Like it's not just intercourse, you know? That conversation was really interesting because it broke down a lot of these barriers for us of understanding how to connect with each other in a way that honored each other and in a way that respected each mm. other's choice of being there. Like it's my experience is not very many people actually sit down and try to define sex and intimacy. No, I don't think people are having this conversation enough. I think when you create a safe enough space where you say to your partner, I love you, I got some tough shit to say, but this is something that's coming from honesty and this is coming from truth, then um, you give them an opportunity to kind of put their guard down and put down any insecurities and put down any walls or barriers that might instantaneously have an emotional reaction. For the next generation, I want there to be less shame, less mm -hmm. secrecy, you know, more communication. Mm -hmm. You 
are raising two awesome daughters. Yeah. Tell me about them and tell me about, you know, what it's like to, to raise, you know, two Filipino Americans. Yeah. I had a very, very poor self-image of myself. Like, I just hated myself. I didn't feel like I fit into any standard. I mean, I'm Filipino American, so that means I'm short, I'm brown, I am a little bit stoutier, a little bit thicker. I don't look like anything in terms of the beauty standards in the media. And because of that, I just felt like I didn't belong. I just did not want my daughters to feel like they couldn't belong in a community and you know, in, in, a, in a space that was dominated by like, hate to say this, but tall white women that are the ones projecting what health and wellness is supposed to look like. I wanted them to look at me and say, well, you know what, my mom's a badass and she's healthy and she's doing these things to lead a healthier life. That they don't have to feel shame about their bodies, that they don't have to look at their bodies and say, well, shit, I'm brown. Because so much of what the media is telling us right now is that it's only, you know, X amount of people that can have that. They can say, fuck, I deserve that too. I should, I should feel sexy and not have to worry that sex is supposed to belong to somebody, that sex can belong to me. And I honestly think that having these conversations will have fewer me too's. Yes. You know, just have, having to, to live with the fact that so many people in our community live with childhood sexual abuse and, yeah. and, and assault in their backgrounds. All this is coming from a culture of silence. Right. And so when I hear you talk, it gives me hope because I know that by having more frank conversations, giving people more tools. Yeah. Because when you teach about sex and relationships and feelings, you teach about how to be emotionally well. Oh my God, you how, teach about how to be human. And how can you be honest about right. your feelings, right? right? And right. I think so many people of color communities, not just Filipinos, don't embrace that many of us have trauma. Yeah. Many of us have childhoods where we picked up some toxic behaviors right. and we got to unlearn it oh, and we got to mm -hmm. heal ourselves and it's lifelong sex ed doesn't happen just by the time you you graduate high school oh my god no it's lifelong like i'm you know 29 i'm you know, gonna be 36 and <laughs> i'm still learning every day yeah every day my sexuality is is blooming and so what i also wish is that people in our generation learn from the younger generation i think yes. they have a lot to teach us I can't wait till my daughter actually tells me that she wants to have sex because I want to be the first person to say, here are the good condoms, here's the great lube, here's like education resources on it. Also, please practice safe sex. You're a vision of motherhood. <laughs> Thanks. And I think that so many parents look at their babies and they don't realize that this is a sexual being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't own your kids. Like you're there to be a safe space for your kids yes. to grow and develop into their own humans. Yeah. What I hope is that there can be more mothers like you where it's an option. Like you can wait until marriage and follow the path. You know, yeah. uh, you, can, you can do that. That's such a valid path. And yeah. you can live with such a delicious sexual life. Right, right. And both are okay. Like I remember having this conversation about sex with my daughter, right. my eldest. And I was like, all right, let's, let's, you know, let's talk. And she was like... You know, mom, I just hope that you know that I'm just as uncomfortable having this conversation as you are. And I was like, great. <laughs> what do you need to know from me? And she was like, I know the basics already, like in terms of from school. And I said, all right, well, just so that you know, I, I don't want to instill any beliefs that you have to wait till you're married to have sex. I don't want you to think that like, love is required to have sex or sex is required to be in love or any of those things. I want you to know that you have an empowered choice to be able to choose who you want to have sex with and sex doesn't just mean intercourse. First of all, it's not one conversation. It's right. going to be many. You yep. have set the stage for a series of conversations. Yeah. Two, you did it in a way that there isn't a right answer. Right. A lot of Filipino parents think the sex talk is be abstinent. Right, right. That's what we got. We both right. got that talk. Right. But what that means is you can't actually tell your parents anything because you will be punished. Right, right. Like if you become a place of where where a wrong answer will lead to punishment, yeah. that's not actually doing it. So yeah. you did, that, that, that's exactly. Okay, good. I mean, <laughs> exactly what I tell parents. It just is about an open line of yeah, communication. That's it. And also it's, it's how you react to things. Are you a person that your child can go to and be honest yeah. or not? Yeah. That's as simple as it, as it is. Yeah. And in terms of bringing it up, I think sometimes you will need to bring it up. Sometimes a child will bring it oh up. God, as yeah. long as there's that back and forth, that's the key. Non-judgmental. Right. There's nothing wrong with having your own beliefs right. about sex, but you nailed it. It's about empowering your children to make the choices that's right for them. That's right for them. Yeah, exactly. All you're doing is opening the door. 
It's up to your children to walk through that door. As long as you keep that door ajar, that sex conversation is something that they know they have the opportunity to walk through. And that's it. I don't know what the future holds. A lot of people ask me, like, what's the future of sexuality? Are kids going to be okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. What I do know is if we build a future with more parents who are as open as you, mm -hmm. with more parents who are as accepting mm -hmm. and less judgmental and more open to having these conversations, and also, this isn't talked about enough, more willing to do the work to heal their own wounds. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't just worry about your kids all the time. Mm -hmm you will pass on traumas. And I think the future is a healed future. And I think uh, the future of Filipino women is going to be a liberated woman that has the ability to write her own story. Mm. The future is a future where there's no more sexual shame mm -hmm. and people can choose the sex lives that are right for them. Mm -hmm. Whether that's no sex, mm -hmm. all the sex, all the time, kinky sex, vanilla sex, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hand sex, you know, whatever people want, like you said, there's so many different expressions of sexuality. And in this future, gender, gender identity, you know, yeah. gender, sexuality, sexual expression are all more open than mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And I hope to be a force in that. I know you are going to be mm. a force. <laughs> Thank you. In that change. And I can't wait to build the next generation. Yeah, same. <laughs>